Well, hello and welcome to this new Rayshot webinar. Today we're going to talk about team score, and as usual, um, old mates Elliot and Stuart will be here to answer your millions of questions. So please feel free to type them in uh, the chat. What can you actually do with team scores? What uh, what purposes do they serve? So. Um, the most common case is probably when you want to calculate the team classification within an individual event, but we'll also look through how you can score a purely team event with team scores. And then we'll have a look at um, a few other special cases where you may want to uh, use the team scores to group and sort participants for advanced out outputs in event files that may have uh, no team component at all. So first use case, team classification within an individual race. So we'll see two um, use cases that are very common, um, adding up times or adding up ranks and points. And we'll see how to break ties if that's what you want to do. So the basic settings of a team score are the team aggregation. That means what do the participants do I have to uh, do they have to have in common to be in the same team and um, the constitution of the team how many participants need to be in the team then the grouping decides um, how many sub team scores are created is it one per contest or maybe one per contest and then a sub uh, rank per gender for example then we'll see how to set up the results um, how to filter your team score and decide on the number of teams and how to order participants. So let's um, have a look first at a sample file. But before I go to that, let me just um, show you the part about team scores in our knowledge base. So we have documented team scores pretty well, I think. Um, so Pretty much everything that I will be showing tonight is already in the knowledge base for your reference to go back to. And then we'll just go into a bit more details about um, all these elements and a few concrete examples. So our first um, sample file is actually um, based on the local road race um, learning example that we published a few years earlier. So. Here we have a five kilometer race in Manchester with around 100 participants. And we have set up a team score that is um, pretty similar to um, the standard team score that is usually in our template. So let's have a look at the settings. Here we have three participants per team and it's a set three. It's always three participants. So minimum three, maximum three. Then we, ha we can have all male, all female, or mixed teams. So the minimum number of women is zero, and the maximum number of women is three. Then to be in the same team, participants need to have the same contest and the same club. And then what are we adding up to calculate the team score? The finished result, which is for us, the gun time. So how will this work? Um, the team score will say, OK, we need three participants per team. And it's based on the finish result. Ascending means the team with the lowest um, sum wins. So it will look at all the participants scored for a given group of contest and club. Then it will uh, sort them by their finish result and um, make groups of three participants. And here we have the max number of teams set to no limit, which means that if for a club I have more than three participants scored, and then I'll have uh, more than one team. So if I, have, if I have six participants scored, I'll have two teams scored. If I have 18 um, participants scored, or at least 18, then I'll have six teams scored. One um, final important uh, setting. Here, 
we have a filter. So here we're saying to actually be scored in the team score, the participant need to have a club. So this way we prevent that participants that have no club value are scored together in the team score. And we are also excluding anyone with an irregular status. So if someone is disqualified but has a finish time, then he will be ex excluded with the filter. So he doesn't end up um, in the classification by mistake. So let's just have a look at some output lists. And here we have a start list where we have all participants grouped by club and sorted by their finish time. So what we expect to happen here with the steam score is, for example, here we have Bolton with a certain number of finishers. And we're expecting, for example, Jill Billington, Richard Scott, and Graham Watson to be grouped in the first team and their times added up. And um, compared to all the other clubs and even to the teams of the same club. So then John Cave, Jennifer Charles, and Paul Hall will make up a second team. So now let's have a look at the um, results list for this team score. Again, here we are using um, the standard uh, output list, which is in the standard templates. And if we have a look at the rank, so here we are only displaying people with a uh, value in the team score one. And then we're sorting them by the rank and by their position within the team. And then we can see that uh, our Bolton mates have been uh, sorted together, Jill Billington, Richard Scott, Graham Watson, and that their times have been added up and compared to the rest of uh, the teams from other clubs and from their own club. Here we see Bolton 2 as well, so it makes, makes up um, several teams for the same club. Now let's look at another use case. This time, instead of um, adding up times, we want to add up the ranks of the top three finishers um, and have a separate ranking for male and female. Okay, so this is our uh, participant list sorted by ranks. And now let's see how we can create um, that rank with those settings. So for this, I have created a brand new um, gender rank team score with the same filter. This time I have selected uh, max number of team one and show all participants. That means I will have one team per um, club, but all participants from the club will count, will be included in the team, even if they don't count towards the sum um, of the ranks. So same here, we have three participants, um, a set three participants, minimum women, maximum women is zero and three. And then I just add gender in the team aggregation. So I'll have only all male or all female teams there and gender in the grouping to create a sub rank within that team score. I could have, of course, created two separate ranks and separated men and women using um, the filter or this minimum number of women and maximum number of women. I find this is a more efficient way because then you have two team scores set up within one. Uh, what else can we say about this? So here we are adding up a result that is called rank as points. And um, so one thing you need to know with the team scores is you can only use um, values calculated in results um, in the results section. So if I'm actually adding up ranks, sorry, if I'm actually adding up ranks, I can't select the rank directly from there. I have to copy it in a result, which is that rank as points uh, results. And here I'm checking that the gender rank is positive before I copy it in that result. Otherwise, participants who are not scored in the gender rank will get minus one, and we may end up adding negative ranks here. Okay. So here you see as well, I have a second result set up. So first, I'm adding um, the best three ranks, and then 
what I wanted to do is um, break the ties on the rank of the third participant. So if two teams are on the same points, then the rank of the third will be the tiebreaker. So let's have a look at our um, output list. Here, this time, our output list is pretty similar. The only thing is we are obviously um, considering the team score too. Note that you can now actually use the name of the team score. So I could, instead of ts2.rank, I could use gender rank ts dot rank and it would work as well let's do it and the only thing here as well is i also added the second time which is our tiebreaker so we can actually see what's happening so here it's correct uh, i have within that team score too i have a female and a male classification and then I have all participants from one club within one team. And I've just highlighted the, the participants who count in the team score with some sweet um, dynamic formatting. So if the position is lower than three, then please show them bold. And then as you can see, Bolton is on the same points as Stockport, but ranked fourth and Stockport third because um, the third participant for Stockport is 13th and the third participant for Bolton is 19th. So let's play around a bit with our team score settings and see what influence that has on the team score. For example, if I wanted to break the tie on the rank of the first instead, I could go here and select minimum instead of maximum. And then, as you can see, Bolton will jump ahead of Stockport because their first participant is ranked before. Okay, so now the time to here is 3 and 10, and it has reordered and calculated based on the rank of the first and not on the third. Now, what if I didn't want to break ties and I wanted to allow ties, then I could remove this. And um, select ties possible. Now, if I go back, Stockport and Bolton are on the same points. Then let's put that back. Where was I? The last thing I could do, instead of one and show all participants, if I go one team only, then you see all the participants, extra participants that don't count in the rank are gone from uh, the output because they don't have a TS2 rank anymore. Um, one last settings we haven't talked about yet is real-time computation. So if you don't tick this, um, and don't activate real-time computation, then the team score will only be calculated when uh, you call your output list. Then it will know, okay, I have to calculate and display the latest results. But if you want it to calculate faster, then you can activate real-time computation. And then if any new result is um, um, comes in from uh, the timing beta tab um, or if anything changes in the team aggregation then it will automatically recalculate the whole team score. Um, I don't recommend that um, if you have like a hundred team scores don't activate real-time computation on all of them because that's pretty resource intensive for the software. <coughs> um, all right, do we have any questions regarding those first two examples? Nothing so far, seems like we're good. Okay, have I forgotten anything? No, then we can move to our second use case. Second use case being <coughs> team events. So 
first we'll look we'll briefly look at the mountain bike team stage race and then we'll go into more details in our team time trial um, for proper team events you'll probably need to use um, some team score fields um, such as the team score position the team score agenda and maybe some further fields which are all um, documented in our knowledge base if you look up team score fields in the knowledge base you'll come up with that lovely table which gives you um, all the possible fields you can use for a given team score so let's have a look at a concrete example So to set up a team event, I would um, recommend you to set up a team score just for the team aggregation. That's not calculating any results. Then um, you may need to use this team score to um, calculate a team category. Then we'll see how to set up results and ranks and create a live result list and how to manage team status on that kind of event. So Let's first have a look at the Peskindor Swiss Epic. That's a mountain bike um, team state race that happened in the uh, Swiss Alps just a couple of weeks ago. And um, in this event, we have teams of two riders. So I have created here, first of all, a team score called Team Constitution. You can see that we have a fair few other team scores. But this one is at the core of, every, of everything else. Okay, We have our team constitution that groups everyone per contest and club that has um, value entered in the club. Then we're sh um, creating one team per club. So that means uh, that the club name really needs to be um, unique. There can be only two participants with that club name. And then we're sorting we're ordering participants by bib because we are not using any results. So here the order participants by is necessary if you are not um, sorting by results or if you want to sort your participants by something else than the result that is uh, set up here. Okay, so what this allows me to do is A, to calculate the team category because here um, we have men, women, and um, mixed teams. And the men category is further split in... Uh, so men are uh, teams where at least one rider is under 40. Then um, teams where both riders are over 40 are masters. And um, teams where both uh, riders are male riders over 50 years of age are grandmasters. So here I've got a team gender um, function that looks at, the, at this TS1 gender all field, which returns one for men teams, male team, uh, two for all female teams, and three for mixed teams. And this choose function is just uh, turning this into um, a more palatable text uh, value. Then here I'm calculating the category of the men's team. So if the team gender is men and both riders are over 40, I check that using those TS1, P1 and TS1, P2 fields. So using this you can access um, from one participant, you can access the uh, data of other participants within the group. So here I'm checking the age of both participants within TS1. And if they're both over 40, then I'm a master's, I'm a man, sorry. If um, both are over 50, then I'm grandmasters. Um, just one note, this is very useful when calculating your category first. And if you still have registration um, going, then it's very useful because then participants just have to enter 
the agenda and agent cal calculates everything automatically. But note that you may want to copy that in an ATF and use it for further scoring. Otherwise, you have all your scoring calculations um, having to check the gender and age of all participants at all times. What this also allows me to do, this first team score, is to then use it as a filter in my results, for example. So here, if I want, instead of grouping per uh, rank and team name, if I want to have it um, displayed in another way, in a multi-line report, then I can very easily go here and filter on the team constitution position. That's my team score. I'm only displaying the first participant of the team. And then from the first participant, I can display the flag and the name of the first participant and the flag and the name of the second participants using those TSX, PY fields that uh, are so practical. So there would be a lot of things to uh, talk about in that um, Swiss Epic file, but let's have a look at a, a simpler event file. And that's our team time trail. That's only slightly simpler. So in this um, event file, again, we have one team score aggregating the teams without calculating any results. Then what's going to happen is we have four timing points. So we get a start detection just to check that everyone started. We have a split detection when before the teams turn around to come back to the finish. We have a spotter shortly before the finish to um, give um, the, the announcer and the public an estimation of who's ahead. And then we have our finish detection. So here we calculate um, the rider's detection, timing start, timing split, timing spotter, then the net time after compared to the team assigned start. Okay. And then we will have to calculate. So we have teams of six riders, but we are taking the fourth detection of the team. Um, like in the uh, team time trial world championships that happened um, a couple of days ago in Innsbruck. So here, let's have a look at our team scores. We have then our after start team score based on the after start um, detection. Here, we will have one team and we will be showing all participants. And we are saying we're taking the fourth detection. So maximum of the first four riders. All right, and the same for after split, after spotter, after finish. All these team scores are calculating a time and I'm copying these in there. We have a team start detection, a team after split, and a team after spotter, and a team after finish um, result. Why do I do that? Because then it allows me to calculate sector times, um, like the sector one and sector two, difference between uh, the assigned start and the split, and then the finish and the split. And then I can also create a team last split ID and a team last split, much in the same style as what we usually do for individual events. So here we are calculating the last detection, the last uh, timing point where the whole team was detected, and then what that time was there. So then let's have a look at um, the start list. So here again, our TSXPY um, fields give us more options than just grouping like this. Using those TSXPYs, I could, for example, concatenate all the last names and display them on one line. Or I could display all the rider names on one line. Or I could just create a start list with all the teams um, as blocks. And I could even add the sports director and all that. Then 
here we have set up the final results when the uh, teams are in the finish, much in the same style as um, what's done in the um, World Championships. So here the four first rider are at the top and then the time corresponds to the uh, fourth rider and then for the fifth and sixth rider, if they're still in the race, then we will have their gap to the fourth rider in the team. Then using that live, that uh, team last split ID, team last split name, and the team last split, we can actually do this for all timing points. So here we have a few more functions that calculate all those fields depending on the last split ID. And then as you can see, we, can, we ne also need to manage the team status because if one participant in the team DNFs, um, then the team can go further. So here I have DNF'd uh, Julien Vermot, but quick step floors is going further. Okay, but here I wanted to, I had to DNS all the riders and then I also need to DNS the team. So I have added here in the participants fields an additional text field that I call team status field. And then I can co go to a participant, look Durbridge, and I can set the team status field. But of course, when I have six participants or maybe 10 participants per team, I don't want to have to go to all of them to um, set the team status individually. So here you see I didn't have to do it for the other participants because then I have set up a user defined field using guess what our very practical uh, TS1 P1 team status field. So then this team status functions this takes the team status field um, value of the first participant and then applies it to the whole team. So that's how here uh, that DNS comes from the first participant and is applied to all to the whole team. Are there any questions? Uh, we do have a question that I think you're going to come to later about points based team scores, including team penalty points in like a cross country example. Okie dokie. Um, so points-based and team penalty, basically. Okay, so we covered uh, points-based. What we haven't covered is team penalty. So we'll come back to it later if you prefer. Yeah. So um, just a, a little bit more about uh, points-based, um, as this is what's used um, in the USA in uh, uh, on cross-country cross-country events. Uh, we do have a, t um, a sample file here set up, which uh, we are happy to share. I don't know much about it because I haven't set it up myself, but um, you see that it handles unattached participants, um, which are not in a club. And it also handles different um, settings because some you've got displacers and all that. Um, we're happy to share that event file um, at your request. Then I'll go back to team penalties um, with something that I'm more familiar with. Uh, and that was on the Perskindle Swiss Epic. So here for each stage, I was calculating, um, uh, 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 let me go to it. I was calculating a stage one start, stage one split one, two, three, four, then a spotter and a finish uh, team score. And then, so that gave me the, the second detection of the team at the finish. But then I might have to add a penalty to it. So then I'm copying the result of this team score, stage one finish team score decimal time one. In, my, in this result, but then the stage one time equals T107, which is my finish time for the team, plus T160 if it's non-zero, 
that means um, that the sum is calculated even if this is null and this replaces this is then replaced by null so if there's a team penalty here in 160 which I can enter manually then it will be added to the state one time and I will need then a second team score to calculate um, the, the actual stage one time, including a potential penalty. Does that answer the question? I think so. We'll, we'll let Bryce let us know. OK. <laughs> uh, anything else? Nothing for now. All right. Then um, I might show you a few more tricks which have a uh, which may have little to do with actual team scores, but team scores come in very handy if you want to do some advanced things. So we've seen um, how you can access other participants' data from one entry. And then I'll show you how you can materialize groups um, within an individual event. And um, I'll show you as well some advanced list layouts especially when you need to display the same participants several times. So for this, the first example I'd like to show you is our cycling criterion and road race template. So in, in road cycling, um, you don't really care about each rider's gap to the first, um, to the leader of the race. You care more about in which uh, bunch the rider is and how far off that bunch is from the leader. So let's say we have a, a road race event with four laps. Then we have a live list here and we're calculating the bunch time for um, each lap. So here we have in the results, uh, last lap, raw time and the last lap bunch time. So then for each lap, it's calculating um, the bunches, okay? The bunch time. Then we have a team score here called bunch where we are filtering because we only want people um, who are on the same lap as the leader. So decimal time four here is the lap count. So to be in the team score, you need to be on the same lap as the leader. We're ordering participants by their decimal time eight, which is the last lap raw time. And we are grouping them by rounded time nine, which is their last lap bunch time. So everyone who's on the same lap and um, on the same bunch time will be in the same bunch. And then we're sorting um, as, as per the last time. So doing this, I can then create my output list where I'm showing uh, the time for the leader. And then I'm showing the gap only for the leader of the next bunches. And I materialize the bunches um, using some dynamic formatting and uh, I also show the number of rider in the bunch for the first rider. Um, let's just have a look at the dynamic formatting in there. So it's just um, alternating automatically between a color between the um, even and uneven bunch IDs. All right. So that was one thing I wanted to show you. Any questions regarding this? Then um, I'd like to show you something else, um, which you may want to give a go if you have a, a long winter night and you have nothing better to do and you don't mind <coughs> um, feeling a bit like a pixel artist reproducing the Mona Lisa um, in Microsoft Paint. Paint. Sorry. So here we are in uh, France timing a cross country eliminator. That is one race format of the UCI. Um, that's part of the 
urban mountain bike championships now. And what happens in that event is, for example, we have 49 men and these will race in a qualifier and the best 32 will be seeded into a round of 32 based on their finish. So here you can see that um, the list takes a while to load and I'll explain the reason why in a second. So here, after the qualifier, our uh, riders are seeded into a round of 32. Let's select the men's race. Because the women didn't have 32 riders and then we had to create another table with one less round and a different logic. So here all our riders are seated into a round of 32 and then the best two of each heat goes to the quarterfinals and so and so on until the final and the uh, little final. So of course here um, our finalists will be pretty much displayed in every column and as you know you can't uh, display a participant more than once usually with the usual settings. So what we are actually doing here is we have a live rank that just uh, sorts all the participants and make sure that one participant is in all the um, in all the rounds and we're s filtering the list to only display that participant and then we're accessing the data from all of the participants through several team scores. We actually have one per um, round. So if we look at our team scores, it looks all neat. We have four team scores, one for each round. If we look at the output list, it looks a lot less neat. So here I'm using the recall multiplier to create a multi-line report. And then I'm setting up each um, column as one field with a choose function on the recall multiplier. Just to give you an idea of how much work that is. I've already told them all winter. This here is um, one column in the ranking. So just, yeah, that was just uh, an example of um, how intricate it can get, but of, of course there are other software that handle that much easier. It's just if you have faith in Rashford 11 and like a challenge, then um, you can have some fun with this. All right, any more questions? Yeah, nothing to pass on, we've just answered Andre here, so we're all good. Okay, then thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Bye.